If you want to see how we got to this point, click right here and watch the playlist from the beginning because this is part three. If you're still with me, this video is starting off in the 3D console space with dual analog controls because that's where we left off. So let's get right into it. For some clarity, let's jump into the future to see the goal here. This is what a modern first person shooter control scheme looks like. You've got your jump on the X or A button, reload on square or X, change weapons on triangle or Y, and of course, shoot is R2 and look down the sight is L2. One of the bumpers is usually for grenades and circle or B is usually crouch, but those sometimes vary. Melee attack doesn't really have a standard either. Regardless, this is the control scheme of all major first person shooters from Halo to Call of Duty to Battlefield, even Destiny. Now that that's out of the way, we can go back to where we left off. In every video so far, I've mentioned GoldenEye. GoldenEye was a revolution in first person shooter controls. You've got the looking and the strafing and whatever, but it also had a dedicated button for switching weapons and a reload slash action button. These mechanics are still used today. Hell, even the reload button is where it is today. Then we have Medal of Honor for PS1, which had the option to have movement and look in the standard spots. Jump is also in the standard spot, but that's about it. In October of the year 2000, the PS2 was launched in North America, of course, with dual analog sticks. It launched with two notable first person shooters, Time Splitters and Unreal Tournament. Both these games have the current dual analog controls we're used to by default. Unreal Tournament is widely known as a PC game, and many PC gamers rejected console controllers, stating that a mouse and keyboard is the only way to play. It was understandable why they might have thought that. Console controls were unrefined and always changing back then. This PS2 port had the option to plug in a mouse and keyboard, essentially turning your PS2 into a gaming PC. As ridiculous as this looks, it was totally acceptable back then. Playing with the DualShock 2 granted you auto-aim to help assist in the janky controls. Time splitters controlled better in terms of moving and aiming, but the rest of the controls were still all over the place. Triangle to reload? None of the other face buttons even did anything. At least shoot was R2. Further illustrating that console games had no idea what they were doing, we had Red Faction that came out in May 2001, and this control scheme was also all over the place. But not even shoot was in the right spot, because in most PS2 and even PS3 games, they mapped shoot to R1 for some stupid reason. A very small percentage of people who grew up playing PlayStation 3 shooters are gonna get really mad at me for that, but it is really stupid. It should be the trigger button. Why wouldn't it be the trigger button? Going from Xbox 360 games over to PlayStation 3 games, you had to use your the other fingers to shoot, not happening, not happening. It wasn't until November of 2001 when the Xbox came out. Just take a guess what game revolutionized first-person shooter controls. You probably guessed right, because the picture's up on the screen already. Halo finally had the controls we're talking about. Except there's a notable exclusion. The left trigger doesn't aim. This isn't something you did in Halo games, not until Halo 5, because that's the modern standard these days. I'm surprised it even took them that long. Not that that's a bad thing, it's just a common mechanic that didn't find its way into Halo. So Halo has the whole package, jump, reload, switch weapons, and shoot. Hell, it even had a melee attack, but no iron sights. What game popularized iron sights? I believe this was derived from the necessity to slow down movement to aim. Remember, movement controls at this time were really weird. They were either overly sensitive or way too stiff. There was no middle ground back then. You had the shoulder buttons to aim in games as early as Goldeneye. The agent under fire port on the GameCube also had L to aim and R to shoot, but I believe it was Medal of Honor Frontline that really popularized this mechanic. I remember this game feeling really, really good, but these still aren't iron sights. This is just zooming in on the crosshairs. Iron sights were a thing in Viet Cong for the PC, which came out in 2003. But who f***ing played Viet Cong on the PC? Iron sights weren't popularized till all the way in 2005 when Call of Duty 2 came out as an Xbox 360 launch title. This game, this game was a major technological improvement. If Halo was the renaissance of modern first person shooter controls, Call of Duty was the industrial revolution. Or you know, 
something. <laughs> so now, here we are in modern times, and to be honest, I don't think we're done advancing. People who play shooters competitively change their control scheme so that they can jump and aim at the same time. This is called bumper jumper, because you would have to remap the jump button to one of the shoulder buttons. Some controllers even have extra mappable buttons. I used to have the Razer Anza for Xbox 360 that had an extra L and R button. But now even Microsoft has their own programmable controller. We're getting to a more unified place with control schemes, but we're not done advancing. We won't be done until I can plug a cable into my brain and play the game that way. So guys, we made it. We're in modern times. That's kind of the end of the series. I have an extra one I might squeeze out on modern 3 platformers, which is the whole reason why I even did this, but I feel like I tossed out so much information already. And these videos take a lot of research and a lot of editing, so that might that video might be a while. So subscribe to see that, make sure you see all of our other stuff. We got new videos all of these days that are happening. And also, what do you guys think about this weird timeline of control schemes? Leave it in the comments below, add me on Twitter, all the social media garbage. Our live streams are gonna be weird soon. So follow me on Twitter for the live streams because the schedule is all weird. And of course, thank you guys very much. And have a good week. A major problem with RPGs is that they favor building a big, expandable, explorable world with limitless side quests over actual game mechanics, like, for example, fighting. Nine times out of ten when they announce a video game movie, it's not right. happening. There's a Mega Man movie coming out. Right. Or they said... They said... It's, it's in... Yeah. Works, I mean, we're but, lucky know. we're getting Warcraft. You I don't know. know if we're even lucky. Yeah. <laughs>